So in this class, we will dis discuss the growth of functions. So basically, we will focus on the big O notation and how we can estimate the big O notation for any code or for any algorithms or for any program. But before I start with the, the growth of the function, just let me explain to you why this is important for us. It is very important in computer science and mathematics to estimate the growth of the function or the cost that a program needs to finish the processing of the data or the input because this is makes the program very optimized. We like a highly optimized code and we don't like a slow code that needs days and years to finish. So by this we can, if we understand how we can estimate the growth of the function, we can estimate the big O notation for any program. This means we can compare if whether two programs are efficient or not. Also, we can decide whether their solution is a practical or is not a practical based on the input growth. In a sense that any code that takes an input from 1 to 100, we need it to behave in the same way if the input is 1 to 1 billion. Because if the function or the program behave in the same way, this means it's very optimized and behaved in the right direction. However, most code and most program, imagine that you are searching for a key in a database. Any database which is very large, it will take any software long time to retrieve the data because it's a very large or big database. But if you have very small and tiny database, the same program, for example, will take less time to find and to identify the value that you are trying to find. And this takes us to the big O notation. Let there is a two function, f and g. And those function, they are from the set of integers or the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers. We say in discrete mathematics that f of x is big O of g of x if there is a constant like c and another constant like k such that is f of x is less than or equal g of x multiplied by the constant c. And there is one condition we need to satisfy in this case that x is greater than k. This notation as f of x is the big O of g of x. You can think about big of O as the ceiling, the upper limit. The most or the worst estimate for that function f of x to behave in really bad manner so we can describe it as function g of x. Now in this case the constant c and k are called the witnesses uh, to that relationship between f of x and big O of g of x. And only one pair of those witnesses is needed to satisfy this relationship. Now if you look to the diagram here we have f of x behaving in the same way in blue and we can describe it by g of x multiplied by the constant c as the upper limit or the cap of the function f of x. Now before we study more about big O notation, there is a few things we need to know. There is one pair of witnesses is found and there are infinitely many pair which can be always satisfy the relationship when k or the c are large enough. Now any pair like c, a prime and k are also satisfying the relationship in the sense that c is less than c prime and k is less than k a prime. You may uh, see that f of x is big O of g of x instead of f of x is the big O of g of x. The big O notation is not an equal sign. We use the equal sign here casually because basically we are giving an estimate. We could say, for example, if the function f of x equal x plus one, that function could grow all the way to reach the behavior of f of x equal to x to the power two. But that is not an equal or a full equal relationship. It's just only an estimation of how things could go all the way bad. 
Now it is okay for us to write f of x belongs to big O of g of x because we can represent big O of g of x as a set for the domain of the function f of x. We normally use or we like to drop the absolute value sign because we always deal with functions that take only positive value, which means you can have zero or more input size. And any code or any program in software engineering, it should take at least one or more input. Let us take an example. Suppose we have a function called f of x equal x to the power 2 plus 2x plus 1. That function could be described as big O of x to the power 2. Yes, it is. Now, why we say that? Since that function x to the power 2 plus 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal 0, and this happened if x equal to 0, it will be 0, right? It actually be it will be 0 plus 1. So it is 1 greater than 0. Now, if you put x there, you will find that the function behave like x to the power 2 plus 2x to the power 2 plus x to the power 2, which is 4x to the power 2. Now, we throw this constant away, you remained with x to the power 2. So yes, that function could be described as big O of x to the power 2 as the upper limit for that function. Now you can take more values when you x greater than 2 or x greater than 3 and you can basically take c which that constant we take in the definition equals to 3 and k equal to as the witnesses instead of that relationship between that function f of x and g of x and you plot them you will see that this is the behavior of 4x to the power 2 and this is nearly the behavior they are touching nearly there when you go all the way to infinity x to the power 2 is closing from 4x to the power 2 and it is bigger than x to the power 2. In this case the witnesses c and k are showing in the plot. Now both function f of x x to the power 2 plus 2 x plus 1 and g of x equal x to the power 2 Basically, in this case, we say f of x is the big O of g of x and g of x is the big O of f of x. And those functions are the same order. Now, this same order means they behave in the same manner. All the way when you get a huge and large input size, both functions will behave at certain point towards infinity <laughs> In similar way. Now if there is a function like f of x big O of g of x and there is a third function called h of x is larger than g of x in this case that function h of x going to be the big O for f of x. So for many applications the goal is to select that function that we can possibly use to describe how things could go badly for any program, for any algorithm, or for any function when the input size became very very large towards infinity. Now let us take another example. Show that 7x to the power 2 is big O of x to the power 3. Now, in this case, we will take x when x is greater than 7, and 7x to the power 2 in this case will be less than or x less than x to the power 3. Now, take the constant to be equal 1 and the k to be equal to 7. Establish that 7x to the power 2 is big O of x to the power 3. Even if you flip them and you say c equal 7 and k equal 1, you still have to get x greater than 7, and we will have at the end that 7 to the uh, 7 x to the power 2 is less than by its behavior when we increase the input size it will go all the way to x to the power 3 in the other hand we can take c equals to 1 and k equal to 7 as a witness to establish the relationship and when x greater than 1 we have for sure that 7x to the power 2 is less than 7x to the power 3, so that c equals 7 and k equals 1, and both are witnesses to the relationship that 7 to x to the power 2 is big O of x to the power 3. Another example. 
if we want to show that n to the power 2 is not big O of n. Of course it's not, because the behavior of big O of n as a linear function should be slower when that function grow all the way to infinity than n to the power 2. But we will see now how we can employ the definition to verify that. We take two constant, c and k, and we say n to the power 2 is less than or equal c n. Now take whenever n is greater than k. Now divide both sides of that equation, you will find that n to the power 2 less than or equal c n by n, then n is less than or equal c. And c is a constant. It will be impossible for any function f of x equal x to be less than a constant, let's say that constant is 7 or 8. Because let's say f of x, x equal 10. f of x, when x equal 10, x equal to 10. 10 will never be less than 7, guys. So basically the constant will never be greater than any linear function. And that's why we cannot describe a function where function is big O of n, and that function could not be less or big O of n to the power 2. On the other hand, n to the power 2 is the big O notation of a function n also take polynomials function like when we have a series and we have a n x to the power n all the way to a zero in this case a zero a one and a n are real numbers such that a n not equal to zero then in this case f of x is big o of x to the power n and this is like very simple to use this definition is much simpler than the previous one because you can start when f of x equal x f of x equal x3, f of x equal x to the power 4, and you just basically simply say a function like f of x equal x to the power 4, the big O of that function is x to the power 5. If the function is x to the power 2, the big O of that function is x to the power 3 based on this definition. So big O estimates for most important function could be done in the same fashion. You can use big O notation to estimate the sum of the first n positive integer, and you will find that you need at least two loops to do that in Python. And that's why we call it n to the power two. So in this case, that function could be described as big O of n to the power two. Another example, if you want to take the factorial function f of n equal n factorial and which is defined by n factorial is 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 all the way to n, you will find that this function, if you use a normal loop to solve it, you need n to the power n for many loops. So if you are doing n factorial for 5, you have to have 5 loops. Otherwise, in n factorial, you could do recursion and dynamic programming process in order to solve it and in that case the big O for n factorial will be n log n. So in this case we have the big O notation to estimate the factorial function and this will be basically n log n as I explained. What we dis discussed so far is just to show this figure. When you plot those multiple function, you will find that a constant when f of x equal one will behave in the same way all the way to infinity, regardless how much input size we have, regardless how much database we have. Now, if that function behave in log n, similar to any divide and conquer approaches, you will find that this is slower. The growth of the function will be very slow comparing to others. But things get really bad when a function starts to behave in n, so you have a one simple loop to finish the execution of the program. So if there is a loop from i to n, and in this case n equals to 100, that loop should be executed 100 times to finish. But take now large input size, take 1 million. This means one million in loop iteration needs to be finished before that program needs to complete. Just assume in normal desktop computer, each loop take one second. This means if the input size is one million, 
it will take us 1 million seconds to finish. If the input size is 1 billion, it will take us 1 billion seconds to finish, which is very expensive time in computer science to finish any code or any program. And that's why we need to optimize our code and to reduce the growth of the function so we could stay in the area where we have n log n, a function of n with one simple loop or binary search tree like n log n or a squared function where we have two nested loop, two to the power n to finish. So imagine that you submit an assignment or you write a program for your customer where the execution time is two to the power 1000. And that 1000, you have only 1000 element in a list and you wrote a program to process them. This means two to the power thousand. If you do the math, this basically means that the program needs years to finish execution. So this is what we mean by the growth of the function. And we normally talk C and D. But for my exam, I like you to use a computer science approach. You can employ the definition and you just describe the solution that you think is the estimate the worst case scenario for that loop or for that program to finish execution.